You got to hold the thing. I do. Too, yeah. We ain't gonna shake. No, no. no. <laughs> Play off here. <laughs> Go ahead, guys. What do you know about Alabama? Uh, I'm upstairs watching right now. Obviously, um, I'm about an hour and a half in, just looking at stat sheets and analytics and. You know, I've watched a little bit of their game against Florida in the, in the SEC tournament at this point. So I'll know more certainly by the time I wake up tomorrow morning, uh, if I sleep uh, by tomorrow morning. Uh, I know they're great on the glass. I know they're very athletic. They're very long. Um, you know, I know they've uh, shot a really high percentage from the two-point area. And, um, you know, I know the kid uh, Randolph, I've, I've watched him play uh, for years, even dating uh, prior to him going to college. And he's a... Uh, a kid I respect in terms of just being a wolf. I mean, he's a tough kid. He reminds me a lot of uh, Ray with his body and his strength and his competitiveness and his relentlessness. relentlessness. So uh, that's about all I know at this point, but uh, I'm going to continue to study. I'm going to know more by tomorrow. What's the dynamic of playing a team with only 48 hours notice of who you're playing? Well, it's obviously but for both teams. You know, you really have one day tomorrow. Um, you know, it's not so much about what we know and what we find out. It's what the players know. You know what what they're able to, uh, you know, able to gather from us. So we'll, we'll, at the same time, you also got to keep it, I think, fairly simple. You know, on, on a on a one day deal, be more about who you are, and what, you know, what you're trying to do than necessarily about the opponent. You guys got back on the court today. What, what, what was it like, and what was what were the, what were the guys? It was competitive today. It was chippy today, which was good. You know, I expected it to be that way. Um, you know, we got up and down quite a bit today because we had had two days off. I thought the two days off for them was good, uh, get them a chance to get a little bit refreshed mentally and physically. Um, you know, kind of get back, uh, get their legs back, get their minds back a little bit. And I thought they uh, they competed today. You tinker with lineups at all? That's a possibility for sure. You know, obviously we didn't play very well the other day, and. Uh, you know, our job is to put them in position to play well, play lineups together that play well together, that, that um, you know, I think give us a chance to be competitive and, uh, and, uh, and to win basketball games. You know, I'm not a, I've said that for a long period of time now, dating back to, you know, when we made, made the change at one point with Brandon Paul and people asked me if I was playing a mind game with him. I don't play mind games. That's not my deal. Uh, we're trying to put the best team out there, uh, the best lineups out there that make us the most competitive. Some new experimental rules in the NIT. What are your thoughts on yeah, those? Yeah, the 30 second shot clock, anything? restricted arc. It will a little bit. Those five seconds will make a difference. I think you've got to initiate offense quickly. Um, you know, I don't anticipate that being a real, you know, problem for us, uh, but it will be a little bit different. Chris, what, do you, what do you know about the players that uh, the players that didn't play for them late? You know, that they had. I think Redden missed. Uh, Kesson, Kesson's missed the final game. And I just wondered why. Was it injury or, you know? I don't know enough about that at this point, Lauren. I know that the kid, uh, Tarrant, was, was a really good player. He's been out for some time with an injury. I do know that. Um, there are other guys. They've had a couple other guys like that that have been in and out of the lineup a little bit. They've changed the lineup quite a bit throughout the year. Um, they seem to be comfortable playing the lineup that they played. They started in the Florida game. Those kids that started for them have all played around 30 plus minutes here the last five or six games. So, you know, we'll certainly start there and then digest the rest of their roster here uh, shortly. This isn't the Anything's... tournament you guys wanted to be, at, be in. You're going into the season. Talk to the guys. Are they are they going to be ready to go for this one? We'll see. You know, uh, I, I'm not playing. I'm coaching in the in the tournament. Uh, I told them today that's a choice that they've got to make as a group. You know, I've had a chance to be in. The, although the tournament's a lot different than when I first started. You know. Uh, meaning that it used to be the deal of probably a little bit more driven by maybe who they thought could draw the most people. You know, I don't want to say money driven, but you know, it was a little bit different type of tournament where this one's a little bit more. Um, you know, I certainly don't want to say those teams back in the day when I was in it as a coach didn't earn it. That would probably be unfair. Uh, but this is a little bit different. I think it's you know tried to see, uh, be seated appropriately and. You know, those teams that were regular season conference champions that, that did not win their conference tournament are in it. And, you know, it, they, they try to seed it uh, based on merit. And, you know, I think all those things are good, obviously, since the NCAA has kind of, you know, taken charge of, uh, of, the, of the NIT. And we understand. I mean, there's 350-plus Division One teams. And, you know, the, the first 100, so to speak, get to play in either the NCAA tournament or the NIT. So, you know, we're certainly not trying to be uh, – you know, where we're not grateful, we're grateful. We understand it's a great opportunity. I said that last year when we were in it. You know, are we disappointed? Uh, yeah, sure. You know, the guys wanted to, you know, all the, I think all the teams that are in the NIT would tell you that they would have 
you know, preferred to be in the NCAA tournament. But uh, for us, we're going to try to make the most of the opportunity. Did you learn anything going through this last year about the dynamic of this tournament or what it takes to get your guys up and ready for this tournament? I thought last year we were up for the tournament, both games. Um, I, I'll be honest, I, thought, I say that. We were a little bit slow to start the Boston game. And then once we got going, I thought we were pretty good. And then I thought uh, the Clemson game was a real battle between two defensive teams. At that point in time, our team that year was really good defensively. Their team was terrific defensively. It was hard to get a basket in that game. It was a great crowd on a Sunday. Uh, in Clemson, South Carolina, great crowd, ruckus environment, um, and I thought both teams really battled. You know, I, I was, uh, you know, I, I thought our competitive spirit was good uh, last year. Our mindset helped uh, with that. I thought our approach, as Marcus was alluding to, you know, when you don't make the NCAA tournament, where's, where are you at mentally going into the NIT, I thought was very, very good last year. Now, will that be good again this year? I don't know. We'll see. You know, a lot of that I think will be dependent upon our leadership and our older guys. You know, I know last year Bertrand and Eki played their tails off in that deal because they wanted to continue to play. And uh, I think that's big, you know, when your seniors have that type of mindset and that type of attitude towards the tournament. Does it say anything about the state of high school basketball in Illinois that no Illinois teams got in the NCAA? Um, I don't know. I mean, I think some of that stuff is, you know, cyclical. I don't, I don't think it's... You know, I, I really haven't put that much thought into that. Um, you know, I know there's teams that had great, there's teams that have good years that don't necessarily make, you know, make the NCAA tournament. It's hard to get, it's hard to get in that thing, hard to advance in it. Um, you know, it's, you know, same thing. Even when I said there's only a hundred teams that get in the NCAA tournament or the NIT, there's 250 some that don't. You know, so. I don't know, Rob, what, what that necessarily says. I mean, I think sometimes it's a basket or two or, you know, margin for error is, is small. I haven't seen a lot of the in-state teams play just because I'm so, uh, you know, locked on, 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 on our team. You know, I did see, I think it was Illinois State play a little bit uh, in the MVC tournament and uh, thought they did, they did a really good job, you know, with their team. I got to see a little bit of that game. Uh, and they're obviously good. They're, I think they're in this tournament as well. Did you guys have that chippiness in practice lately? About yeah, I thought we practiced well leading into the Big Ten tournament, if that's what you're alluding to. And I thought our preparation was good, and I thought the guys did a really good job of, of uh, preparing themselves to play. I just think once the game started, we didn't, we just didn't have enough energy. We didn't play as well as we needed to play. Um, give Me Michigan credit. You know, I've watched it now a couple times. I mean, I thought they were terrific on offense. I mean, phenomenal. You know, and so give them, you know, give them credit, and they get going like that offensively. I think they shot. My wife said they shot. She was, we were in the hospital. And they said they shot 56% from the field in the first half against Wisconsin. Wisconsin's decent. I mean, they're not bad. 56% uh, is an awful high number. I mean, they can do that on the offensive end. They can make shots. I mean, we, we knew that going in. And, you know, they executed well, and they got great shots. The ones I had a problem with were the ones in transition or some of the ones where we could have controlled a little bit with some better communication and execution. But, you know, certainly give them a lot of credit for executing well and making shots when, uh, when it mattered. How important do you think these extra games can be for the guys, the young guys that are coming back next year, some, some quality postseason minutes? Well, I think anytime you can get in postseason play, you know, obviously it's a, it's a great opportunity. Guys continue to learn and grow. And, you know, what we learned from the tournament the other day, we talked about that today as a team. You know, what we learned last year playing in this tournament, how we can be better. You know, I think if you, you know, if you have a mindset where you've got an op where you view it as an opportunity to learn, regardless of what you know what what you're doing, where you're at at the time, and we always take that mindset, or we certainly try to, uh, to learn from every circumstance. You know, I think you can get better and you can grow. You got any sleep the past couple days? Yeah, a little bit. I slept really good last night. It's the first time I've slept in a few. I didn't sleep very good on Thursday night because we didn't play worth a darn. And then Friday and you know Friday and Saturday with the uh, Friday with the with the uh, baby, but. But uh, we're awful, awful happy. She's been a real blessing, and you know we're, we're uh, you know, Allison's. Uh, I think she's wondering what time I'm going to get home tonight, which I told her will be really late. But, but other than that, she's doing great. It is 9 p.m. and you have a big cup of coffee. Yeah, I figured I'm going to need it with the lack of sleep that Marcus was <laughs> alluding to earlier from the tournament. Uh, now another tournament. Uh, you know, being over at Carl for a couple days there. Uh, you know, I probably thought I might need an extra boost, Rob. Maybe a second cup today. <laughs> But everything is uh, fine. Kate is healthy. Allison's yeah, healthy. she's doing great. Allison's doing great. Appreciate you guys asking. When you uh, approached the team relative to the thing you talked about, the ball sticking, it seemed like there was more 
I sometimes uh, late in the season it was more like an isolated situation where guys were going one on one, maybe more than you wanted. Yeah, I just think it depends on the game, Lauren. I don't think we had any consistency with that late. You know, I thought, uh, you know, I'd have to go like for example, I thought in the Northwestern and Nebraska games, I thought we were really good at moving the ball. I thought we were excellent. In particular, the Northwestern game may have been the best we moved the ball all season from start to finish in a game. I thought that was terrific. I thought Nebraska, we played very, very unselfishly. You know, I thought in the Purdue and the Michigan games, the ball stuck too much. I thought guys played hero ball too much. Um, you know, we've got some competitive guys that were trying to, I thought, watching the film, trying to make plays at times that weren't there, you know, trying to turn the tide or change the momentum or, you know, and, I, and that's not the way you do it. You have to do it together as a team. You have to execute as a team. You know, I think some of that continuity certainly on the offensive end comes with playing together for long periods of time. And it's no secret that this year's team had several different lineups, different rosters, and it took a little bit, you know, that was a challenge uh, to get that maturation, you know, process on the offensive end. You know, as uh, Stan Van Gundy once said to me, you know, on defense, it's five guys working together to guard the ball. On offense, it's five guys working together with the ball. So when you add the ball, it becomes a different factor, synchronization, chemistry, you know, all those different things come into play. And I think that playing with each other over a period of time is what alleviates some of that with the ball sticking. And obviously we weren't maybe quite as fortunate as some of the other teams this year. I'm certainly not complaining. My first six years we had Joe Bertram miss one game and I had a kid at Ohio miss a, a semester and that was it in six years. So, you know, but I will say this, I think we caught up uh, with those first six years all at once in one large dose uh, here in the seventh year. So hopefully that bodes well for us next year. The first thing I think about when you talk about that, though, when you mentioned Purdue and Michigan State, their defense was so it appeared to be so much better than the defense of Nebraska and Northwestern. Yeah, I think Michigan State statistically and Purdue statistically were good, but I also think Nebraska's defense statistically was terrific for the majority of the year. I mean, I think it was really, really good. Now, offensively, from a statistical standpoint, they, you know, they weren't as good. Uh, but defensively, they were, you know, they were really, really good. I thought really stingy. Um, Northwestern played zone, you know, for 40 minutes that day, Lauren, when they played us in here. So, yeah, you see different defenses, but it shouldn't matter whether we're playing zone, man, or – you know, whatever, whoever we're playing against or whatever defense they're playing, I mean, the ball has to move. Um, we have to screen and cut better and execute better and execute the little detail things uh, better. There is a synchronization on offense. I think you learn that more and more as a coach, that that synergy gets created by playing together. Uh, and the more they can play together on that end, the better. Shannon Herber, Mark, you got a question for Coach? Well, I mean, we're going to plan on base, ba plan uh, her based on what we see on the film that, in terms of how they played thus far. That's all we can do. We can only control what we can control. Um, it is a little bit of a unique circumstance for sure, uh, but you can get personnel tendencies certainly uh, by watching the film. And, uh, you know, you try to maybe, uh, you know, you know, you know what assuming does. It can sometimes make an ass out of you and me, but. Um, at the end of the day, can they put in an entirely different offense and defense in 24 to 48 hours? That would be really impressive. Um, and, and maybe they will. Uh, but we're going to you know, bank a lot of what we see on what they've done thus far. Well, I don't know that yet. They practice really well today, I will tell you that, um, for sure. Uh, but at the same time, I'll be honest with you, Shannon, I, I don't know how much I want them. I don't want them necessarily to digest it and get swallowed up by it. But, you know, the way we played on Thursday, I'll be honest with you, I'm going to remember that one for a long, long, long time. You know, so, I mean, you know, those are the things I think that drive you, you know, a little bit. So, 
we certainly don't want to digest it and allow it to control us. But, you know, to say that, you know, they're just going to snap their fingers and, you know, just completely forget about it. I mean, I, I don't know if that's necessarily the case, to be truthful. But today, from the way they practiced, they competed really hard. And, you know, may, maybe part of it was they were anxious to get back out here and get moving around again and play again because uh, we had not played since Thursday. No, we we watched it together, um, but not necessarily like just holding out hope or anything like that. I think you know we had a pretty good feel, and I was pretty transparent with them and truthful with them uh, a- after the game on Thursday. Um, you know, so I I think they were, you know, they they were, I, obviously, you know, you 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 watch it and you know you want you want your name to, you know, come up come up on that bracket. I'm sure the guys did as well. Um, hopefully it'll motivate some of our younger guys. The last thing for me, sorry, is um, the selection committee said they had you guys under consideration even after that Michigan loss. Sure. Kind of, do you feel like that's the one that cost you when you look back at it? No, not necessarily. We had several other opportunities throughout. Um, not necessarily just, you know, one game. Um you know, I will say that, uh, you know, we take a lot of pride in, in, uh, in competing and, um, and especially in postseason play, you know, whether that's, you know, the, the Big Ten tournament or a postseason tournament. And, you know, we, we want to play better than we played, you know, the other day. But the reality of it is, I mean, you could go back and, you know, think of four or five other games where, you know, if this would have happened or that would have happened or – we might have closed better in one game or whatever, that that ultimately could have been the difference, certainly aside from Michigan. Thanks. Congratulations on baby. Hey, thanks. Anybody else from the phone? Okay, anything else Just here? Just a, a big picture question. Uh, obviously, you want to be in the NCAA tournament every year. It's disappointing when you're not. But three years in, your thoughts on where this program's at as a whole, maybe where you thought it would be, yeah, I mean, there. I think we're for sure further along. You know, obviously, when I look back at, you know, what we uh, what we had when we got here, where we were, the mindset of guys, um, you know, at, at that point in time to where it's at now, um, the players that are on our roster, the players that are coming next year, you know, we're, we're much, much further along. You know, obviously, all of us as coaches would like to speedball it. Um, and, and uh, but the one thing I will say, and I, I said I've said this very poignantly, you know, we're not going to take any shortcuts. I mean, we're not doing it. You know, we're just not going to do it. So, you know, we're going to stay the course, and and uh, you know, we'll learn from different things that we go through, and continue to recruit quality guys that that uh, that, that fit our culture, and continue to hold guys accountable, and continue to help them grow, and continue to get better as a program, and continue to evaluate all areas, you know, whether it's, you know, skill development or strength and conditioning or academics or offensive efficiency or whatever it is, we're going to aspire to get better uh, in the off season. Right now it's not the off season yet. So it's not time to go in reset mode or reflect yet. You know, we still have some basketball uh, to play, but in terms of where we're going, I mean, I'm, I, there's no question. I mean, we, we still believe in that blueprint that we have and, you know, every once in a while you get thrown different pitches throughout, you know, Last spring, did I envision having the roster throughout the course of year three that we had this year last spring, you know, even pre-Darius Paul? Absolutely not. I mean, how would you ever envision that? But curveballs happen. You get thrown different pitches, and, you know, you, you've got you've to hit the pitches that are, that are thrown your way that are in the strike zone and, you know, hope that you can hit some singles, doubles, triples, and home runs and hang in there and keep fighting and keep swinging. And, you know, that's what we've done. I do think going through what we went through this year, um, I'll be honest with you, I think it's made – I look back, I'll probably look back on it and say, man, it's made me a better coach. Because the, the, the amount of adaptation and adjustment we've had to make on the fly with substitution patterns and rosters and offense and changing schemes and it, it, the, the total amount of that in one year probably is more than the other six years combined. You know, so that's that's taught me that's taught me a lot, and uh, uh, I think it's uh, some good and some bad. You know, uh, some that I might do a different 
differently again. Some I'd like, yeah, that was good. We'll do that again, you know. So I think from that standpoint, it's certainly made uh, it made our staff better. It's made me better. Okay. Thanks, John. Thanks, Thanks John. Yep. Thanks.